Welcome to the second part of this lecture on augmented reality. Now we're going to talk about applications of augmented re reality in education. Augmented reality is well aligned with constructivist learning notions. As a reminder, constructivism is a theory of knowledge that argues that humans generate knowledge and meaning from interactions between their experience and their ideas. With AR, learners can control their own learning and manipulate objects that are not real in augmented environment to derive and acquire understanding and knowledge. There are proven benefits from interweaving theoretical and practical learning. There is a growing need for innovative e-learning concepts and associated enabling technologies which can support such integration. From this specific perspective, AR can bridge this gap between the theoretical and practical and focus on how the real and virtual can be combined together for, to fulfill different e-learning objectives and requirements. For example, ER can be linked for connecting physical mock-up experience from constructive activities and abstract modeling from analytical activities in the context of e-learning in design. It's been observed that augmented reality is great at representing spatial information. And spatial information is type of uh, information uh, or knowledge that you would require to, for example, mentally rotate an object. So if you can imagine a potato, right? Uh, so you can imagine it in your mind and you can mentally rotate it and, and, and Im imagine it, how it looks from both sides and, and all that or Eiffel Tower or whatever object and that type of knowledge is also required uh, when, when you're navigating a map for example from getting getting from point A to point B um, so it's it's excellent at presenting uh, spatial information or, or information that requires multiple views so if I never saw a car uh, I would benefit from rotation that augmented, re augmented reality provides. I would be able to rotate the virtual car with my hands and that ties into uh, tactile sensory modality. So I'm adding more senses to my learning, to my learning experience. So I'll be able to rotate the car and get more, extrapolate more information from that visual input. And then also uh, augmented reality can reduce cognitive load. So all those computations that are required to process these, these mental rotations. For example, if you're looking at a car, 2D image of a car, you have to imagine it how, how it looks from the other side. Or, But that's a simple example. But, you know, if, if you go more complex, like a car engine, for example, you don't know how, what, what's on the other side. You don't know how certain parts look like. Um, so you're trying to, to mentally imagine how things look. So if you had an augmented reality model, you would be able to see it from all sides and thus reduce your mental processing load and you can focus more on learning not on extraneous uh, information that's associated uh, with uh, with these mental computations it's also been found that uh, augmented reality this is all from uh, literature reviews and research uh, it's posit positively influences learning increases user motivation and learning effic efficiency AR can impact spatial visualization abilities which I already mentioned uh, it reduces misinterpretations during learning and increases overall understanding of a subject. Uh, it's suitable for experiential and collaborative learning processes as well as for student engagement. And I'm going to show you a video of, of that, actually two videos. Um, pedagogical principles that are addressed by AR include physicality. Remember when I mentioned the, the, the tactile input? So adding more senses to learning usually enhances learning, so uh, physicality, embodied cognition, situa situated learning, and mental action. So here's an example of uh, student engagement uh, with, with the augmented reality models. Uh, this was part of my doctoral dissertation. I did a lunar phases and the student was just interacting with the, with the markers and the 3D models. In here you see a student holding a marker, fiducial marker, and the camera is mounted on the, so he's using spatial interface. So the camera is mounted on top of the monitor and the student sees the, the augmentation happen on the monitor itself. 
So I'm going to play a video and just, just observe the, the interaction and the look on student face. So he, at this point he's looking at the screen, not at the marker itself, so, which is not ideal for augmented reality system, but it's pretty close. Another example is, uh, again, student engagement and group collaboration. We have four or five students in a Spanish class. I'm just going to play the video. So this was a little passive approach to that. They weren't really manipulating it at this point. They were just kind of using it as a 2D image. So AR provides many benefits in 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 learning environment. Um, for example, there's no cost for making mistakes in, in these kind of systems. Uh, these 3D uh, objects are are virtual. You know, they they're not physical. Uh, students cannot get hurt by handling them. Uh, and these kind of systems are really promising in training of laparoscopic surgery, uh, for example, heavy equipment operation, and uh, high-rise area operation, and firefighting. And so far, we did the firefighting video, which I'm going to show uh, in in my next slide. And uh, and these type of training scenarios uh, provide opportunities for more authentic learning with diverse learning types. And, and it's mobile. You can actually provide these uh, these systems in online environment, and you can create these augmented reality content yourself. Um, you can d uh, design them in advance, and you can post them in your online class. And when the time comes, for example, students will download these uh, markers, and then th they're going to print them out, and then they would interact with the content that you previously. Um, created and then you can tie assessment into this I mean it can be it can be really powerful uh, constructivist lesson that students will get a that that will be memorable to your students not often you get to uh, physically experience your your multimedia content it's not just a video it's actually full experience where you're interacting with these 3d models so here's a Here's uh, one of the examples we did for fire, fire science. Uh, today we're going to talk about enclosure fire dynamics. We're going to use augmented reality to help us go through an enclosure fire. Uh, we're going to start from ignition, move through growth, talk a little bit about flashover, and then end with um, backdraft. So let's take a look at our little um, augmented reality uh, image here. We have um, just a three-dimensional apartment. We know that ignition has occurred, so we know we had fuel, heat, and oxygen in the right, uh, right proportion for combustion to occur, and it's uh, continuing to occur because we have flames. So in this example, uh, we worked with uh, Professor Gorbett to create a series of uh, fire progression rooms. So the, the room is generic. We just added more fire and smoke. So it was a four or five slide scenario that progressed through enclosure fire dynamics. A second video is coming again from uh, uh, from fire science. Uh, it's a building collapse. Uh, again, it's another it's another progression scenario uh, that starts with first model and then ends up four or five models after that. I'm gonna I'm gonna play it so you can get the the idea. All right. So in the past couple or week or two, we've spent some time talking about exactly what buildings are and why it is we build them. Uh, we'll spend the first part of this lecture talking talking about exactly what types of loads there are out there and how they apply, how they affect different types of structures. All right, now, like I said, we've got this great little model here to help us walk through. And it looks like we've got uh, Homer Simpson here uh, in the middle of our floor of our, our little three-story building here, two-story, three-story building, I'm sorry. Okay, so here now we've, we've lit our building onto fire, on fire, okay? 
All right, we got a fire burning on it. Looks like the second floor of this structure. Okay, all the load did was redistribute itself. And once that gets to the point that it just can't take it anymore, we see the collapse. Now again, collapses can be local, as shown in this picture, or they can be global, where the whole building falls down due to again, this. Again, this was a, this was a recorded a video, so it's not. It was augmented reality at the moment we were recording it. But once it became recorded, it was it became a video. But nevertheless, this was a this was offered uh, for students uh, to view, and it was a part of the curriculum and a course. I think it was in module three or four, and students were supposed to uh, view the video and then complete an assignment based on that. So we were uh, so we were constantly evolving these uses of augmented reality uh, in our next development of uh, augmented reality experience we would provide you with the um, with the 3d models and the students would be able to download it and interact with it at home another example of um, augmented reality in education are augmented reality books um, and I have an example that that I'm gonna demonstrate shortly uh, they're usually um, accessed in front of your computer webcams or mobile device but uh, with, with the digital information that would appear, that would be augmented, it can be 2D images, 3D images, um, a video, another video. And without much uh, discussion, I'm just going to show you uh, an example of it. This is augmented reality solar system magic book. We just created this yesterday. And so this is still a developing idea with us. You can pick up the marker. So you get the idea of what kind of interaction you can uh, can have this. Uh, the, our latest iteration of this magic book contains videos, contains sounds, uh, 3D objects of a planet. They contain information on both sides of the marker. And this type of book offers tangible learning experience. And then you have uh, use of augmented reality for assembly tasks. And that's a huge area of augmented reality. Um, that has applications in in uh, in manufacturing, in uh, machine industry, in uh, maintenance, in warehousing, in uh, car repair, for example. When you're using these augmented reality uh, assembly tasks, the usual outcome is task shortening and less errors. AR usually reduces the time for uh, successful task completion, reduces the number of errors and also helps trainees achieve higher performance. So here's a video that demonstrates that. There's several other videos. Um, first one is on a task assembly and the second one is on a engine repair. A car navigation system helps you easily find your way to a destination. How about doing complex assembly tasks? In many cases it would be beneficial to have a navigation system that guides you through from the start to a finished product. Here we show an example of utilization of modern technology applied to manual factory work. The basic components in augmented reality applications are a display device, a camera, and a computer with application software. Various kinds of hardware can be used to implement this. And here's an example of using augmented reality in car repair. It's very similar to assembly task. Uh, this is a disassembly and assembly task. So it leads the user through a series of steps on, for example, how to remove the, 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 the manifold, whatever, different parts of the engine. Here's, so here's a brief video. And then lastly, uh, augmented reality and mobile. Uh, this is a huge area um, that, that's been evolving for past two, three years. Uh, it's really easy to create these types of uh, augmented reality experiences. For example, most obvious one is, for example, a museum. Um, each artifact, through image recognition, uh, each artifact can contain supplementary information. It can be a, a video, um, audio information, it can be images, it can be 3D, it can be anything. 
and it allows users to to interact with it in real time and space. So here I'm just going to play this brief clip so you can get a more more idea. Nowadays this statue is called the Peplos Kori. This means the maiden who wears a peplos, which is a kind of dress. Her dress was richly decorated with figures depicting small animals, birds and horsemen. These relate to hunting and nature, which were under the protection of goddess Artemis. Her hand is also different. You can see the virtual information augmented over the the statue itself. So you see on the on the iPad screen you can see the the decorations and, and hair and all these colors where you wouldn't see it on the on the statue itself. So we're we're almost done with this lesson. Uh, I'm just gonna briefly go over the suitable content for AR content. It can be really any type of content. Uh, it doesn't have to be 3D. 3D are co more complicated to create. Uh, it can be 2D, for example. You can have an exhibit where each uh, picture or painting is a marker itself. So if you pull up your iPad, it triggers uh, information retrieval and you get more information about that image, about that picture. So it can be audio, video, it can be 3D if you want, really. So the content should contain multidimensional information. Uh, for example, 3D models of archaeological artifacts. Students can download archaeological artifacts from, I don't know, um, various museums and you know they can interact with them at, at home but if you're not an archaeology uh, professor you know use your imagination it can be used um, the content can be can be suitable for exploration again museums outdoor activities scavenger hunt that's more for younger children but nevertheless it can, it can be useful and then content should illustrate complex processes in our workings of an engine for example a type of content that's not obvious when you're looking at the 2D image or even a video. Video is linear. Augmented reality is non-linear. You can interact with it um, however you wish. You don't have to move the playhead and you know search for content. You create the content yourself. You create your experience. Uh, when not to use AR, if you have a lesson or concept that can be illustrated with a 2D image. Well-known concept, for example, automobile, automobile or airplane. You don't need to um, use augmented reality to demonstrate, depict the concept of, of uh, Airbus, airplane. You know, people know what airplane is. If they've seen mo many models, unless if you're unless if you're engineer and when you wanna if you wanna depict the s certain parts the flaps I don't know the rudder the whatever um, and and then that model be, would become useful where students could zoom in and see these individual parts moving but if you're just talking about a history of airplanes and you're just showing uh, any, any airplane uh, a 2d image would be fine so that's that's not when to use uh, AR and it's kind of a waste of resources and then it becomes a gimmick and that what that's what happened with virtual reality it became gimmick uh, a lot of people flocked it they thought it would world, uh, solve the world problems but it didn't and uh, right now I mean it's still being used for for certain things certain things but um, so I don't want to see AR that that happened to AR and as I already mentioned content can be in 2d 3d audio video animation and lastly I would like to briefly discuss uh, what kind of support you would get if you do decide to create uh, augmented reality content uh, first you can speak to one of the IDC instructional designers most likely me or any other instructional designer who expresses interest in creating augmented reality content or you can do it yourself with tools such as Metayo Creator you can go either way uh, the learning curve to creating AR content is somewhat steep, but it's not undoable. Uh, it might take you a few days to get the uh, get the grasp of some of the fund fundamentals. If you do have experience in creating 3D content, it would make things much easier. And on the end, you will create a powerful, engaging, constructive lesson that your students will appreciate in the long run, and that will remember years from now. And this ends this lesson. Please complete the rest of the module tasks, complete your module readings, and I will see you in discussion board. Thank you.